Welcome, Solara here. I hope you guys are doing well today. Um, I'm here to do a relatively quick video, and relatively being the key word here because um, short for me is anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. So um, I have a whole bunch of downloads, um, even a dream download I want to delve into another time. Um, but I have a few shorter downloads that have been coming in today, and so I kind of feel like if I can get this video out, I can kind of clear the cachet because um, I just have a lot a lot streaming through right now. So um, before I begin, I want to welcome you. Thank you um, for being here. Welcome if you are visiting for the first time. Um, if you were attracted by the title of the video, then I invite you to see if there are messages here for you and if you're vibing with my frequency. I'm not here to amend myself for anyone. I share what I share. I believe already in what I believe in. I'm not here to be proselytized to or to be convinced of anything and I'm not here to convince anyone else or evangelize here either. Either you are in alignment with who I am and my message or you can take a stage left or a stage right depending on which way you want to exit in love and you can go and find the beings who you actually like or are a frequential match for. That day of coming into other being spaces and trying to shift their energy to make yourself feel more comfortable, those days are over. Okay, we don't go to someone else's house and tell them to change their decor because we don't like it. We just stop visiting or whatever you do, but you don't do that. So please don't come onto my channel and try to engage in arguments with me or try to convince me to see things your way. You are more than welcome to see the world any way you want to see it. You can believe anything you want to believe. That's fine. I'm not going to challenge you on it. It's not my problem and I'm not your problem either. Okay, so public service announcement because um, it just has to be said, okay? Okay, welcome if you're returning. Welcome to uh, my newest subscribers. Thank you for being here. Um, welcome to those of you who've been here, you know, since last video and those who've been here from the very beginning and somewhere along the lines. I really do appreciate all the ways that you appreciate me in my value and what it is I've been sent here to share with the collective, okay? so. Thank you also for a beautiful month of April. Um, I finished off the month this weekend with two group sessions, a tarot astrology and a road back to wholeness small group session. And um, I had a lovely time meeting so many of you in the month of April. So I hope um, maybe I'll see uh, the same faces again in May and hopefully I'll see um, some new ones there too. So I will post the information about the May calendar, the May events um, that I will be hosting, the group events I will be hosting. Um, for those of you who are on Substack, you might already know that May 19th is the day that we're going to meet for our monthly group Q&A, but I will release all or I will put up and publish all of the other events um, that I'm hosting in the month of May in the next couple of days on the community board. Okay, so let's get into it. So first and foremost, um, I've had the, these particular downloads have been coming in today specifically. So um, I've been writing them down at different times. And now I'm seeing how the message is all is all interconnected. So the first uh, download that was coming through is you are about to go farther and higher than you ever knew was possible for you. You are about to go farther and higher than you ever knew was possible for you. And then another message that was coming through was there's a calibration of your fields to hold this new bandwidth so you can hold and sustain what is here for you. And they were very, um, it, the, the wording was coming in very specifically, meaning it said, and sustain what is here for you. I was about to write what is coming for you, but then I heard, no, what is here? Meaning that this is a message, not for someone who is wishfully hoping that this is, um, this is for them. This is a message for someone who you've already been receiving, um, these, uh, you, you already have been receiving these downloads for yourself. And so this is just extra confirmation and maybe extra details, um, maybe 
uh, you're already seeing some of these things come forth in your material reality. Um, maybe they're still uh, getting heavier in the mental and the emotional planes. Maybe you're very consciously learning how to direct your energy to reach into um, this new, uh, this new, it's like this new expanse where you can be more free to explore your power, um, but not only explore your power, but how you're able to then channel and direct that to consciously create what you want. So up until now, a lot of us have been unconsciously manifesting situations, circumstances, and the whole point of ascension is coming back into such clarity and union with self that we're able to start to direct our energy our consciousness towards creating stable realities that we actually want and are actually a reflection of our true worth as opposed to the devaluation programs um, of the false matrix where we were constantly um, trying to find our way and constantly therefore taking on uh, what I like to call false matrix ID entities um, that were prescribed in order that we fit in, that we succeed, that we really, you know, ultimately survive. So there's a calibration of your fields to hold a new bandwidth. So there's an expansion that's happening. And what's important is that not only that you hold this new frequency, but that you can sustain it. And this is also important because so many of you, so many of us have known how to access certain things that we wanted, but not been able to hold the frequency to sustain it and to grow it into a legacy right? Um, that's a Ten of Pentacles energy. And the whole reason for that is because um, if you are not living and embodying a frequency, you can visit it. But bringing it back and establishing it into your reality so it's constant without strife, without um, harming another aspect of yourself, whether it's your physical health, your mental and emotional health, it becomes really difficult. And this is what um, the false matrix had us constantly engaged in, constantly striving. We'd get to places and in order to hold on to our position, we'd have to constantly sacrifice because we were living in a um, sacrificing uh, system. That's what the, the false matrix was based on, which I will get into um, in another video. Why the credit debit system of the false matrix system was designed to keep us constantly enslaved and indebted in order that we'd be open to harvesting and how Taurus season comes to help us to rise out of that. But um, what I was saying here is that, um, you know, now we're learning not just to visit a frequency to pull it in, but to actually uh, raise our energy back into the frequency that just naturally magnetizes these things that once upon a time we had to strive and work hard for. If you're striving and you're working hard to, to get and attain something, that means that it's not yet a frequential match. And that's not to say that hard work isn't important, but the work we should be putting in is not the grind that we've been told um, to partake in in the false matrix. What we should be doing is shifting our reality on every plane so that we can pull not only pull in the frequency, but we can begin to become the frequency of whatever it is uh, we want to pull in, or rather not whatever we want to pull in, we become the frequency we actually are when we are in harmony with ourselves, and when we are the frequency that we that is truly divinely established within us to promote harmony, our natural electromagnetic settings will effortless, effortlessly magnetize more towards us that promotes our own harmony and repels that which tries to take us out. 
hope that makes sense and Taurus season is a really important time because it is all about these energy body light body tune-ups rainbow body activations that are streaming through the planet right now and it happens every Taurus season but this year it's magnified because the Sun has moved into Taurus for the first time since um, the nodal shift a few months ago and then also we have like um, I think we have the Sun as well as three other planets moving through Taurus also. So whenever we have Taurus, a Taurus transit, whether it's a collective energy or a personal one in our charts, we're dealing with reconnecting to our true value system that's a reflection of our cosmological truth, our cosmological identity, our I am truth, who we are as infinite beings and um, everything we've accrued through our own um, our own soul's evolution. Taurus is what helps to reconnect us with uh, the value system we're setting for ourselves. Meaning that every single situation we've had in the false matrix where we have been devalued, it's because we set the tone for that value. We set it by either um, having you know, traumas that have caused us to think lowly about ourselves and holding that in our fields and being therefore our electromagnetic settings tuned into that wrongful frequency. We've had it that way. Um, we also, you know, uh, having to uh, assimilate and become parts of things and, and shifting and changing ourselves to be accepted. There's so many um, different reasons and different ways we um, devalued ourselves and therefore we're living existences that we're calling in the matching energy that we were holding in our fields okay and for another thing all of the programs of the matrix the social programs um some of the the, the generational traditions um you know the very institutions and systems that we have to we were either a uh, program to follow or we have to depend on in order to survive they had a vested interest in keeping us all at a lower uh vibration look at that my light just went off they had putting our lights out you know they had a um, vested interest in keeping us in the dark about who we actually are okay and for as long as we were believing um these these false tales about us, these limiting stories um, that we are this and that we are that or that we can't do this or we can't do that. And um, as long as we're believing um, those stories and we're building lives based upon those programs, um, we are tuning our own electromagnetic settings to call in what matches those narratives. And so Taurus season is always about Aries, Taurus, and Gemini season are all about us realigning with the mind of God, or rather how it is that God, God, Source, sees you, or how you see, how you're able to see yourself through the eyes of God, or your divine identity, your, your I am truth, okay? So um, uh, Aries season is about reconnecting to that, uh, you know, a connecting to your divine identity, your true story, or to another layer of it, because we are working through cycles. We're constantly moving out of one cycle and hopefully graduating into a higher one, although some beings are just going around and around in the same cycle, or some are even moving into smaller cycles based upon um, whether or not they're trusting their soul to go farther or they're trusting external energies that are taking them um, deeper into cycles that of self-betrayal, okay? So um, everything is a cycle. So Aries season helps us, if we're using the energy correctly, to reach higher levels of connecting with our divine story and with our divine truth. And Taurus season helps us to connect with uh, the resources that become available to us based upon what we want to believe about ourselves. So in other words, if you believe yourself to be, um, you know, uh, a failure, then 
the resources that are going to be available for you are going to be those that energetically agree with that perception you have of yourself. Okay, so, and, and this is a lot of the time it's unconscious. None of us are walking around wanting to create um, destruction and dysfunction for ourselves, but please understand and overstand that these programs were designed to put you into a state of deficit so that you become dependent upon um, external factors for everything, including emotional validation, um, you know, stability of what you think, um, and then of course the, the, your, your material well-being. So, um, another one that was coming through really strongly, I went for a walk this afternoon and I was doing some, some sun gazing and, and just really tuning into what was going on. And as I, uh, was coming back into my body and walking back home, I heard one minute you are, and then the next minute you aren't. Um, one minute you are and the next minute you aren't and then I saw a clock and you know how when you get to the 59 um, minute, the 59th minute, so right now as I record it's 8.57 so we're moving, moving, moving towards the end of the hour so we only have three more minutes of it being in the eighth hour and then all of a sudden it's going to shift into the ninth hour and just like that you're in a higher state of time, right? Um, it feels like we are, um, if this is your message, it feels like we are in this liminal space where um, the laws of time and space are being stretched in accordance with your ability to stretch, to stretch how you perceive um, how you perceive those things. So one of the main ways the false matrix kept us stuck was having us constantly um, believe that certain things were possible or weren't possible, right? And the truth of the matter is as infinite beings, um, anything you can conceive, you can make happen. And the only thing that's going to ever separate you from the state that you're in versus what it is that you are conceiving in your own eye, your own mind's eye, will be all of the densities that have kept you out of that so far. So, for example, if you want to write a book, right, the finished product is the written book. But in order to get from wanting to write a book to completing uh, the finished product, you have to collapse every density and every step that right now is separating you from the beginning to the finished product, right? So you have to get over your fear of writing, perhaps. You have to get over, um, you know, a writer's block or um, procrastination. You have to get over the fact that maybe you think no one's going to want to to read what you're writing. There's so many things that even before you put pen to paper or you sit down to write, you've got to overcome within yourself. Those are the densities that so far have kept you from, from committing to writing. And then once you become committed to writing, you have to keep keep on doing it until you get to the place where you've produced um, the manuscript, what it is you want to, to put forward and put out into the world. And that's a process, right? Um, but it feels like in this situation, there's something that's being like condensed, meaning that uh, like the title or like the, the first message that was coming through, you are about to go farther and higher than you ever knew was possible for you. It's almost like um, maybe you've been doing some timeline jumping so far. You've been experiencing it in um, minutely because you've been very tuned into watching the flow of energy so that you're aware. Because the truth of the matter is we're always timeline jumping. We're going backwards, forwards in accordance with our own minds, our feelings, um, our thoughts, uh, and what we're putting our energy towards. We're constantly timeline jumping in accordance with 
uh, the frequency we're holding and your frequency is always going to be a reflection of how you think and feel okay and what you therefore begin to call into your reality as an experience we are as beings everything we do works on a feedback loop even our body shows us that information goes out and then our body calibrates and adjusts in accordance with the information it's receiving right so when you uh, put information put sugar into your body um, your pancreas says, oh, too much sugar, it's not going to go, it can't all fit into the cells, let's release some insulin and bring the sugar levels down so that uh, the sugar doesn't, um, you know, doesn't put every single cell in this person's body out of balance, right? So um, that's the introduction of the information would be the eating of the sugar and then what happens in your body is a calibration of your system to recognize um, how it needs to respond in accordance with that new layer of information okay now as a holographic being we also work on a feedback loop so whatever thought or intense emotion enters into your internal reality um, whether you choose to and you know uh, like grab on to what's going on with you internally or not your external reality will start to calibrate to show you what it is that's going on internally so that you have the ability to change your settings internally so that you can adjust your external experience that's how it's always worked the matrix taught us it was the other way around which had us in complete schism creating shit that we didn't want and feeling helpless all the time like how do i shift this how do i change it and everything we did was like trying to uh, work harder do more things materially when really the change always the change that we want that is actually sustainable can only come when we shift the internal settings and and then hold <laughs> hold those settings and then externally everything will come into calibration with what the internal the true internal settings are meaning also like um, whether we are still producing our external reality mostly or, or, or very heavily off of our woundedness and unconscious programming versus whether we are taking more of a conscious stance and directing our thoughts, our mental and our emotional energy towards what it is we actually want to build on a conscious level versus, um, you know, just having life happen to us. When we, when life just happens to us, we become a victim to circumstances. And then becoming a victim to circumstances over and over again, it creates um, misery, it creates doubt, it creates fear, it creates, um, um, it creates further uh, uh, disharmony and, and more energies that cause us to go deeper into self-betrayal. Okay, so one minute you are, the next minute you aren't. So it's almost like um, the 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 o'clock part of a clock. But it's like uh, what they were showing me when I was um, getting this download was, you know how sometimes, especially in the world of entertainment, right, you have people who one day you know nothing about them, <laughs> and the next day they're everywhere, they're all over the media, and everyone's talking about them, and they go from being completely obscure, and, and nobody's really paying attention to them, to the next minute everyone is uh, tuning in, right? Um, there's that moment where uh, their lives shift completely and then they were showing me also I don't really watch long well, I don't really watch I don't at all I don't watch TV um, but I know my kids were showing me something on TikTok I think back in the end of the year end of last year about the Kardashians and it was like a parody about how Kim um, when she finally became a billionaire or something I forget what it was but uh, there was a moment before where she wasn't one, right? And it could have just been, she was one cent off, one dollar off, one million off. It doesn't really matter to us, it matters because we think about the the, the, the 
the um, we think about um, money in terms of how the matrix has programmed us, meaning that uh, a lot of the time we, we hone it into figures and some figures we think of as being like impossible milestones to reach or being very much and not because they're not, but also because of, um, well, because of the programming, which is a whole other thing. But the point is one minute uh, she was a multimillionaire and the next minute she was a billionaire and there was this parody about um, her obsessing over I think a dollar or something that got her over to becoming a billionaire and it's just like um, just like this in an instant numbers change in an instant a reality can change and and numbers can change to give you a whole different status and access because that was another thing that was coming in you have new access codes and heightened limitations around who can access you you have new access codes and heightened limitations around who can access you and this may or may not yet be materialized meaning that um, you may be seeing glimpses of this um, I got some very uh, specific messaging here. It came in that you'll know it is forming to be established in your reality, meaning that you'll know that these new boundaries uh, are being established in your reality because you're gaining um, you're gaining these new access codes. Because the things these are some of the signs, right? Things that once phased or triggered you suddenly don't anymore. Things that once phased or triggered you, they suddenly don't bother you anymore. You're like um, past the point of certain energies being able to move you out of your stability. Because anytime we are bothered by something, um, it causes our energy to kind of waver. You know how like if somebody does something to trigger you or to anger you, how it can make you tremble. It causes your energy to waver. The reason why you viscerally are feeling the anger in your body is because you've been taken out of a place a moment before where you were, you might have been feeling more in your energy, more in your body. And then all of a sudden, this external information enters into your fields that throws you off your block, kind of. And anytime we have a very heightened emotional response to anything, whether the emotion is a high emotion like, you know, sudden like surprise and, and, and sudden joy, or whether it is that suddenly being angered by something or suddenly afraid of something, it's taken us out of the state of stasis that we were at before um, the information was introduced into our reality that caused us to either jump or to um, to fall, right? And so when that occurs, our energy starts to waver. And that's actually not a bad thing in and of itself because when our energy is wavering, that's where we have that opportunity to by way of what we're thinking, feeling, the stories that we're choosing to um, grow, you know, like especially consciously, the stories we're choosing to grab a hold on based on the, the experience that's making us waver, as well as the emotional history, what it triggers, what it reminds us of. At that moment, we have an opportunity to either leap forward or to go back based upon how we are going to use that wavering energy. So anytime we we become a little bit destabilized in our energy, it's not a bad thing if we know how to move it in order to go higher or where it is we want to go. So it's akin to a storm, you know, or when something suddenly, a tower moment, right? Tower moments are all about the sudden whoosh, lightning, sudden enlightenment, sudden shift in like a, something happens suddenly and all of a sudden life as you knew it a moment before isn't the same anymore, right? And oftentimes with the tower moment, what you knew before that, you will never go back to knowing again. 
not in that context you know that's the power of the tower moment and this is kind of what i'm i'm getting also um with this one minute you are and the next minute you aren't it's like that that tower moment that work that pulls you out of a reality that you once were in that you probably will never be in again for better or for worse you know the tower moments for better or for worse okay so that's one thing thing that things that once phased or triggered you suddenly don't anymore and um, your ability to find the medicine or value in any and every situation or person is growing your ability to find the medicine or value in any and every situation or person is growing. So what does that mean? Well, this is about using the wavering energy I'm talking about where to, in order to, to move forward. So for example, um, if something is, if something once upon a time uh, triggered you like maybe let's say someone there's someone who knows how to push all your buttons right um, and now when they try to do that it no longer bothers you the reason for that is because for one thing you found your value to a point where it doesn't even matter what their story is about you anymore and it doesn't matter how much they try to use that old narrative or the narrative they have about you that was once upon a time designed to pull you down they don't have that power to move you in the frequency you're in anymore because you're more rooted in self and your true value so where they once could bother you it doesn't bother you anymore because you are more rooted in your truth and therefore when they try to come to you with an energy that is deceptive meaning that it's counter to who you know you are it no longer can move you right so um and instead uh you're seeing that and not only are you seeing that in terms of like just judging them oh my gosh i see that you're just an insecure person who feels like you need to try to pull other beings down because it makes you feel momentarily better in your ego and so this is why you do this to me it, it's it's more than that and that stuff is important to know too it's more like seeing that but also um, seeing where the value is in that behavior in terms of what it has shown you in the past about your own boundaries and your own um, mindsets and programming that wasn't in alignment at the time, but also it shows you where you're progressing electromagnetically in terms of your own settings, meaning that if something once upon a time bothered you and it doesn't anymore, that means you've recalibrated your energy field to a place where you repel it. You get what I'm saying? You repel it. You repel it either because it doesn't bother you, <laughs> so it can't penetrate, it can't cause you to waver. You stay in your energy, you stay in your value because now you've established a higher level of value and truth about who you are and you're, you're staying in it no matter what fiction any other being tries to throw your way. So it actually, if you're able to actually like almost even become excited <laughs> about someone trying to trigger you um, and it not working or um, if you become excited about your own progress and you don't make it about their own woundedness this is also what helps you to to go forward right to um to establish uh these settings into your field in a higher way and if you can go even farther and while you don't tolerate their um their attempts to to, to energy harvest off of you because that's what it is they're trying to make you smaller to build themselves up because they don't know how to do that for themselves with their own energy internally right um, if you can go farther and even uh, feel compassion not for their behavior per se but where their own souls are because a person who's still engaging in that kind of of behavior especially if they're doing it unconsciously or they're continuing to do it um, without course correcting <laughs> um, 
than they are beings who are still very uh, stuck in, in self-betrayal cycles. And so if you're able to have compassion for them, it's not about um, having, uh, it's not about having a misguided, um, people-pleasing martyrdom energy. No, I'm talking more about having compassion for them because you recognize yourself in them now. You see the, the place you've graduated from, not from a high and mighty, like, I'm going to look down on you now because I've, I've moved up frequently. No, but more like, because I love myself, I love every aspect of who I am and who I was and who I will be. And so I can see that part of me and I can love her now. I can love him now. Whereas once upon a time, I judged that part of me. Um, I didn't give that part of me love. I didn't give that part of me acceptance because, and you'll know that's the case because you'll still do it to other people. We'll still do it to other people. So um, when we're still very judgmental and critical about self, um, we tend to be that way about others too because this whole world, we're holographic beings. It's just constantly, it's a feedback loop showing us what it is that we're go that's going on internally that we're not seeing. Okay, so when you are so in alignment with who you are and you're so in your own energy, um, there's no real need for the constant um, having to watch the play, kind of. You know how like when, um, uh, let's say, basketball players or even football players, um, they'll, study a, uh, they'll study a game. They'll watch the game after the fact to see where it is they did well, where it is they can tighten up, they can learn more about their opponents. So if they meet them again in the future, they'll know um, their weaknesses and strengths and what they have to focus on, etc. Um, it's kind of like we're dealing with that in our external reality. As holographic beings, we're constantly having a playback of what is going on internally that we are not yet connecting with that we need to see. And so now it's playing out for us in our reality so that we can get a better grasp of it and change our settings internally. I hope that makes sense. So in other words, the more we betray ourselves, the more our souls are actually going to call in the energies that um, will grow, will grow that so that we stop we put the boundaries up so that energy will stop invading our um, reality. I hope this, <laughs> this is, no, I'm not gonna say I hope. This is making sense to you if this message is for you. Simple as that, okay? Um, if it's not making sense to you and you still hear, that's fine too, you know? Um, everything is about um, intention. So if there's something about it and you're vibing with it, that's wonderful, you know? Um, it will open up for you when and as you're ready. So let me not throw that too far. <laughs> That's what I have. I'm going to go into a card very quickly, then I'm going to get going. Okay, so I'm not going to use this deck because there's so much um, I need to organize this. It's gotten... One second, let's see if the whole thing is like this because I actually kind of wanted to use this deck. I apologize about the lights. It's all good because I've been saying for a while I was going to do blackout messages and I haven't gotten around to doing that. So it's kind of funny that <laughs> it's kind of funny that that happened. Another thing you're going to notice, and I was just writing about this on my Substack on my daily alchemy, is that. Um, hidden animosities can no longer be hidden from you when you're no longer um, choosing to deceive yourself. So for as long as you're living in truth about who you are and what's going on with you, the harder it is for external energies to fool you, no matter how hard they try, because you're no longer fooling yourself. And as such, 
once upon a time, what was animosity that seemed to be so well hidden or that you were in denial of? It becomes very, very obvious and magnified when people's intentions towards you, 21, 21 on my clock, are not as pure as they want to pretend that they are. Okay? And that's not, again, to cast judgment on another being. Sometimes we're just not compatible and the animosity that comes up is there to show us that we're not for one another, right? Um, the conflict that arises is there for us to make a decision. <laughs> but it's, um, uh, it's amazing because there's so many, um, so many of us are still trying to find our, are still finding our way back into the fullness of who we are. Which is difficult. It's like I just dropped a card. And then you have to contend with some um, beings who that's not going to be their journey this lifetime. You know, they're not, it's not in their soul's purpose to go to the places that it is for you, which is fine. That doesn't make you better and then worse. It's not what it's about, but it just puts you out of alignment in terms of. Um, you know, having any kind of of real meaningful um, way of moving forward with them. And this is where it comes down to uh, not only compatibility in terms of whether you, you feel you like someone, but compatibility with purpose. You know, um, I am of the belief that uh, when we are in right relationship with other beings that we are fulfilling our soul's purpose in loving them and wasting our time on trying to make somebody come into alignment and to love us or wasting our time trying to manipulate um, situations and people to get things that they don't want to freely give that isn't freely like um, bringing them into our reality is such a waste of our soul's wealth and value to me like I've said it before and I'll say it again, I, I will be alone before I ever um, settle again <laughs> for any, uh, uh, settle again um, for being with any person platonically, romantically, who doesn't adore me, you know, who doesn't even love every single thing that makes me up across all planes. If it's not in tune on that level, if my cells don't sing because of their presence in my life, then what's, then no. <laughs> you ain't coming into my reality to make me sick. Fuck no. And um, the thing about it is that there are many beings who are going to be drawn to you, and this is another message that was coming through, and um, in my other like long pages of downloads, which I'll get into another time, but um, the message that was coming through was about how um, there are some beings who are going to be very magnetized to you because of the kind of energy that you're putting out based upon the caliber of um, your frequency, based upon the fact that you've had to earn uh, that sense of self and self-worth and stability back. That's very attractive. Um, it's very magnetic. It's the divine feminine energy coming back online, you know, for all of us, whether you're a man or a woman. And that energy is very attractive because that energy is nurturing, it's mothering, it's exciting, it's healing, it's sensual, it's creative, it's golden, you know, that, that feminine energy. It, it draws beings in. It's magnetism right um, and you are reaching a higher threshold of magnetism which is what is taking you higher and farther than you've ever been because you're you're going to be pulling in things that match this higher truth and then there are beings who will try to push past your fault lines push past your boundaries push past your natural um, you know uh, defenses and you'll feel it because you you know that they're they're trying to be in a place that they don't belong, you know. And for you, energetically, um, probably you're holding the higher frequency in those situations because by the time you make the decision 
um, to hold your frequency. You're no longer chasing and trying to push yourself into other beings' energy. You're holding your frequency and allowing things to come towards you, but you still have to deal with other beings who are going to not quite be there, and maybe it's not, again, in their soul's purpose to get there, who still think that um, because they see something in you that they like, and no notice this, they see something in you that they like, which oftentimes is a lust energy anyway, and I'm not talking about even sexuality, I'm talking like people can be magnetized to how you think, how you look, how you act, what you have, who you attract around you, it doesn't always have to be sex. It's still a lust energy because they still want to take from you for their own pleasure or advancement. And it doesn't matter who you are um, and your core and true value. They just want to take from you. Okay, so that's lust. That's not love. That's like when people sleep with another person, get their rocks off and keep it moving and don't even ask, did you get yours? That's what that energy is, if we were to play it out in another way, right? And they don't see it as being bad because they just see something they like and they want to have it. And some of these beings will call themselves spiritual all day. And they, and they don't get this simple concept that, for one thing, um, there should be no chasing at this point, right? And there's no forcing ourselves into other beings' existence or manipulating or, or getting into their energy and trying to change them in order to fit a narrative of them that we need to have in our own um, lack of awareness of who we actually are. Because it's always going to be a lack of awareness because beings who are secure um, know that whatever it is they're seeing in another being and they're admiring in them it's because that being is a reflection of them. They don't have to possess and to own um, and to control that aspect of another person. They just need to realize, oh, wait a minute, if they're coming into my reality and I'm liking what I'm seeing, this is a part of myself I need to tap into too. They're just showing me that. But because of the false matrixes programs and all of the masculine and feminine distortions, so many beings were taught that if you like something, that you must have it, you must possess it. And they even do that with beings, with other people, or with the information that somebody has. It goes to so many different levels. This is why um, when I say being radically honest with yourself, do you see your propensity to do that too? Because we're all guilty of it. Because we're, we were all under that programming. You know, so the minute we start to see how we've been unconsciously programmed is the minute that we begin to see how others are do, have been doing it to us too. And not from a position of judgment, but from a position of recognizing, oh, wait a minute. This is uh, uh, proliferating in my life, in my uh in, in, the, in the energy and the patterns that I've been engaging in because there's something in me I have, to, I have to deal with. There's something in me I have to deal with. And here's the thing about, um, about that is that a lot of the time, um, whenever it's time to go to another level, right? Whenever it's time to bust through a limitation or a plateau that has kept us in a certain cycle or pattern that we've been wanting to get out of, whenever it's time for that, something's going to come to flare up your ego. Something's going to come to flare it up. And when I say flare up your ego, ego is interesting because it can express itself in arrogance, but it can also express itself in, in complete self-rejection and self-doubt. It's all the same. It's just different ends and extremes of the same energy, right? So um, whenever you're about to move higher, something's going to come to um, to fuck with your ego. Now, at that point, a lot of the time, the, the emotional mechanism that's going to be pushed is going to be pride. And pride is not a bad thing, right? So hold on a second. Let's see if I get at my vibrational scale. I'm going to show you that pride is right there. It's not at the bottom. In fact, it's all the way in the green. So it actually can either 
lock you out of your heart chakra or take you higher depending on how you're using the energy. So what do I mean by that? Pride, um, can, pride will always build a wall, right? So it will build a wall to either keep something in or it can build a wall by pushing something out and then erecting a wall to keep that thing out. So for example, um, somebody comes to you and they trigger you um, or they upset you and you don't even really realize why you're upset by what they've done or what they've said. Um, or maybe you, you, your response to them is very magnified compared to what it is they've actually done and you don't realize that it's because they have actually um, triggered you a childhood wound or an issue that you're not facing up to, right? So um, if you're not aware of how you work energetically, then what you can do is uh, build up a wall of pride and whatever lesson wanted to come in to set you free so that you could heal yourself of whatever wound the trigger is covering. Um, so you, you get prideful, you push them away or you push away what it is that they're there to show you. And so therefore you don't get to, to get the medicine of what the trigger is showing you. The trigger is always showing you that there's still a wound and the wound is often hiding um, what is perpetuating a pattern or a cycle that you no longer want. So when we push, when we are offended <laughs> by a trigger, instead of searching for the wound that it hit and the story behind that, and even sometimes the entity that is keeping that story and that wound alive, open and running, right? Um, we close ourselves off from being healed from that so that uh, we no longer are triggered or we no longer are housing that program or we're no longer stuck in that cycle or we're no longer being attacked by that entity that needs us in that story um, in that story or still in that wounded state specifically in order to to feed or to live or whatever you know like um, so the pride actually works to lock us into that situation farther and deeper without us even knowing. Or when that situation occurs, you can take a moment and even if you get upset, because we're all human, we're not perfect and we're learning, right? So you take a moment and you're like, wait a minute, I know that just irked the shit out of me, but what is the true purpose? Because if it's coming into my reality, it's, it's always coming to show me something. My soul has invited it in, even if I'm not fully consciously aware. So what is the medicine? What is it showing me? What do I need to know? And when we open ourselves up, we open our minds and we open our hearts up to receive the answer in truth, then we're able to... Um, we're able to make adjustments and to, to make the adjustments we need to therefore begin to see the true medicine, begin to see where the, what, the med, what the purpose is. And the purpose is it's going to lead you back to the wounding. This is the wound. This is the energy. This is the story. This is the program. This is what you're not seeing beyond the trigger that this thing has come to show you. And now you're able to see it. You have the autonomy and the power to begin to do what you have to do to shift it. Right? Um, and when you shift it, then you can begin to take that energy of pride and instead of using it to lock yourself in, use it to lock out energies that would seek to take you out of harmony. So you're still connecting with that energy, but you're using it in a different way. I hope that makes sense. So yes, so much for a shorter reading. Okay, yeah, this is beautiful. So um, look at this, I love it. Eight of Wands, Sagittarius energy. This is the zero to 10 degree mark of Sagittarius. So if that's, uh, you know, uh, zero to 10 degrees is, uh, 
in your Sagittarius placement, if you have a Sagittarius placement in your chart, um, and it's zero to 10 degrees, you might want to take a look at that. We have the chariot, which is cancer energy, right? And then we have at the bottom, the magician, which is mercury energy. So it's connected to Gemini and Virgo. Okay, so what's really interesting about this is first and foremost, we are moving um, towards the new moon in Taurus and the next full moon we have is the full moon in Sagittarius. And I've been getting um, messages and downloads about how a lot of what it is that I'm sharing with you now, it's going to really um, pick up and, and move you forward in accordance with your own faith. <laughs> In yourself and your process and your own story and um, what it is you're choosing to believe about yourself and connecting with your worth etc what it is that you establish in this time the full moon in Sagittarius really has the ability to help uh, push you forward right uh, very very quickly and the chariot I don't know if you're aware of it but this has everything to do with light body with learning how to utilize um, the power of our own emotions to steer us towards realities that we now want, no longer being run off of our unconscious programming, but taking back authority and responsibility and becoming conscious programmers by being very aware of our own emotional resonance, our own emotional wounds and the stories that are connected to that so that we're able to, to have a better and a clearer picture of where we're coming from in terms of what we've been unconsciously creating so that we can begin to do the work to shift into now um, consciously um, investing in the emotional energies and the emotional states and the nervous system balance we need that promotes our sense of internal harmony and peace that will then automatically pull more, grow more of that energy. Your energy field um, will always grow more of what you're asking for. And what you're asking for is not what you put out there into the world with your words, but what is actually in your fields as part of uh, the, tr the stories that you are investing your energy in um, internally, the things you're constantly thinking about, the things that you are um, paying attention to all the time, okay? And then at the bottom, we have the Magician. And the Magician is the card of the, the tarot that reminds us that we have access to every single thing we need in order to reconnect to the fullness of our cosmological truth, to, to our magicalness. We have it. We have it internally. We even have it biologically. Um, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole right now, but you literally have everything you need in order to awaken yourself and harmonize yourself into the level that your soul has chosen for this journey. You have it all. And um, even the ability to get to that place of believing that enough that you're able to access those things because you can't access the solution if you don't believe you already have it, if you believe you're helpless, if you believe you'll never find your way out and yada, 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 that's what you're going to produce because it's based upon your own energy. That's what you'll produce. So sometimes what we need to get past is not even the, I believe I can do anything. It's like you need to get to that, that place before you can actually um, anchor that into your reality. And so the magician reminds us at every level, we have what we need to get to the next one, even when it doesn't seem obvious. And all we have to do is have enough faith in this truth to ask ourselves, ask our higher selves, uh, what are my resources? <laughs> I know that, and I've said this before, there's nothing, there's no situation that you or I got ourselves in before we were awake and aware that we can't get ourselves out of when we're consciously, you know, consciously awake and consciously aware of our own pattern cycles and what it is we've done and where it is we want to go, etc. There's nothing. It's not more powerful. Um, your unconscious uh, drive is not more powerful than who you are when you take 
the fullness of everything that you are and you bring it back under authority to, to self and to truth. I wanted to say subjection, but we're not subjecting. We are, um, we're coming back into our places of authority and sovereignty, right? So, um, yes, that's what I have for you. It's already an hour in, but I thank you uh, if you have chilled out with me so far. Um, for all further information on how to work with me, you can check out my website, solara.info. All that information is in the description box in the comment section below. Um, keep your eyes open for when I put out uh, the May group events, if you'd like to join me um, and others for those this month, uh, this coming month. Uh, what else? If you would like to donate to the channel, you can do so either through my Ko-Fi or my PayPal. And I thank you all for, um, you know, your generous donations and your support. I really do appreciate it. Um, if you'd like to join me over on Substack, the information for that is also in the description box below. And I think that's it. For those of you who are new, I am on Substack where I publish um, what I call daily alchemy as well as other works of fiction, non-fiction mostly, some poetry, um, but mostly my daily alchemy messages and my reflections on uh, what is going on in the energies, whether from a collective standpoint solely or interwoven with my own personal experiences and what I'm going through. So. Substack is where you can connect with me for all of my writing and my updates and I'm, I publish there a few times a week so I'm there pretty much five to six days a week there will be something up on Substack so um, you can check me out there especially if you're into connecting with reading work um, but yes 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 I think that's it I'll see you again soon take care